Welcome, in this video I'm going to give you a quick update on the X apps called the Token Creator. And uh, we can see here that some community did an announcement and we can see the further improved the safety of the X app community. Our Token Creator X app now requires KYC. So KYC, so know your customer. Meaning that they want, so if, if you intend to use the Token Creator app, so if you go to Sum and click here on View My X apps, there is the X app for the Token Creator. And if you want to use the tool, which was written by, by Nixer F, FM, I think, I uh, hope I said it correctly, then you have to do KYC. So the, the important part there is that, um, so, right, so, okay, describe the recent token friends we brought, some scammers to daylight there, uh, therefore we felt the step is necessary. So, okay, very important is then, the accessible ledger is decentralized, anybody can do whatever somebody pleases. Okay, so anybody can create tokens, anybody can do whatever, but here we have a tool created by somebody else. So, for example, we've got here Nick FM, so just one person, who decided to create a tool here. And I could also create a token creator app and then it, then it could put on my own restrictions on it as I seem fit. Okay, so that's where it, so there's the other tweet here, which I want to highlight. I'm reading some comments centralized, okay, because many people don't understand that and I really also don't appreciate people um, automatically making these assumptions. Yes, he can just stop people from creating a token and that's because it's centralized. And uh, so some people are not, uh, should, I don't know, should, some people should consider or oh, some people need to understand the basic concepts, you know, because like if, for example, on a website, uh, like let's say if we've got a Bitcoin website, uh, well, let's take Bitcoin, why not? And we've got the Strike app and the Strike app also can just block users and put in restrictions and uh, Strike is doing KYC. And is Bitcoin suddenly decentralized? No, Strike. Strike is a company. Strike is centralized themselves. They do the custody wallets for Bitcoin and they are centralized as a company. And it's the same here. We've got just some community. Somebody wrote, so Nick's the FFM, he wrote the tool and he's able to put on his own restrictions as he seems fit. And it's for the, and also completely in standard. It's for the protection of the community and also being able, if somebody's scamming, to at least have a name and an address to maybe also take legal action against the person. And that's completely uh, uh, legitimate. And other people who don't want to use his tool and who know a little bit more about the Excel Pledger, who are, like, for example, I could also create uh, a token with just some Java code or whatever, JavaScript code, whatever. And then you don't have to use this tool and you can, you can just do it. Okay. And right. So I'm just going to go through with you with the new version of the um, a a token creator. Right now I'm going to test it. So we can see here, this XRP lets you create your own token. And also important to know, you're paying 50 XRP to the developer of this tool. Okay, the 50 XRP are not needed by um, the XRP ledger. These 50 XRP are just a payment for the tool he programmed because you also spend many hours creating this tool here. And yeah, it's a reimbursement here. So right now I've got this account here. So can, there are just some information here. You accept paying 50 XRP for this service. So like I said, you're paying for a token creator service. Uh, now I also have to define this recipient. Unfortunately, it was uh, a little bit stupid because I didn't create account first. So I'm gonna import a new account quickly here. Oh, not that one, family seed. Uh, I'm right in the test net. Um, test, I uh, order, yeah, test.dictoryfitoolkit.com. I'm just gonna also, there's the faucet. It's just gonna redirect me here. And I quickly bookmark that and also have to use dark film. Ah, great. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to also get another secret here and use it also in the in the emulator. And yeah, test notes, test note two. All right. And now I'm just a, right. Okay, now I have to go back into the X app. So again, oh, trying to scan. Nope, not that one. So token creator. Then I'm going on next, then I've got the issuer account, then I just check all the boxes here. So please read that, so I'm right now just skipping that, but, but please understand what you're doing. All right, so now I've got the issuer. Uh, oh, maybe it was the receiver. So now I have to enter the password. And you know what, I'm just gonna read quickly. Yeah, right, that's the, that's the receiver. So I have need the, yeah, I call it test too. it's great. Okay. Four, five, six. So we've got the receiver here. Yep, I made a mistake. So I have to. So probably the other way around. So it's that one here. 
So just important, one account is doing the issuing, the other account is receiving the token. Uh, then I'm just gonna call the token dev token. I'm gonna issue whatever, 10,000 of those. Then signing information, uh, right? What else is there? In the following steps, you need to send various transactions. Okay, sure. Then the first thing, right? So now the issuer has to do payment. So that's like just paying for the service. I hope I did select the issuer, but I think so. So now, now I'm just doing a payment for 50 XRP to the creator of the tool. So that's the service fee you're paying for, like I said, using this tool here. Um, all right, let's go on. Afterwards, you're saying default ripple on the issuer. Okay. So this is just a setting. So um, the so so the the well, let's call it obligations can ripple through the issuer account. Right, so now we need, now the receiver, so the person who wants to receive needs a trust line. So now we're saying a trust line, so the receiver account is able, like I said, to even receive the token. Because if you don't have a trust line, uh, nobody can send you that specific token to you otherwise. All right, then let's go on here. Now I'm issuing the token. I can set a memo, but I don't need to. So issue a token, it's fine. Again, now I'm just doing a payment from the issuer to the receiver and creating myself an obligation. All right, so next, then I, then it's optional, as you can see here, you can maybe black hole the account, but I don't want to. Uh, what does it mean if you black hole the account? You, uh, if you black hole the account, the supply will be fixed. So we've got it here, meaning that you can never again create more of the token and you can also not access the account ever again. So that's what black holing is. And right, so you need always to understand it, but also you're not able to freeze trust lines. Um, right, so if you have a quick look, we can, for example, let's take account one here. Account one is the best example. Uh, it's also a black hole account, and this account here, nobody has access to this account. And yeah, that that's a so-called, like I said, black hole account. And many people, when you black hole your own account, you are setting a trust line to this account and then disabling the master key. So that's how you black hole an account if you do it manually. All right, so I'm just gonna skip that and we are done. That's generally speaking how it works. Uh, now I've got my test and true user, that's the issuer here. So because we can see minus 10,000, I have an obligation of 10,000 dev tokens. And the person who has it right now is the dev user. And if I, for example, send tokens from a dev user to the issuer, the tokens are being burned. So for example, if we would try, for example, to send whatever 100 dev tokens, to the issuer here. I think uh, I think some even, even uh, oh, no, it works, cool. So if I try that, then you can see that I only have now 9,100 tokens and the issuer here also has minus 9,100 because as soon as you send it to the issuing account, the tokens are being burned because the obligation is, be, is being well removed or the obligation gets lowered, okay? So that's how that works. All right, so that's basically it for this video. So just mentioning and also emphasizing that the XRP ledger is not centralized. Many people don't understand that. Many people don't even have have any idea how how blockchains work or how anything works, and they just are just well uh, well just screaming like what their what some influencers tell them, so they don't think for themselves. And it's just unfortunate because like that way, just rumors get spread and people just repeat falsehoods and that's not good. So I also don't realize, so yeah, he's also mentioning it here. So it's also very important. Yes, the token creator, Accept is centralized, like I said, because there's one developer who created the Accept called the token creator. If I create my own Accept, I can also change it as I please. It is developed and hosted by me, Nixor FFM. Uh, FFM yeah. It's an easy to use guide to create, talk, uh, to create a token on the XRP Ledger and it requires a KOC now. However, the XRP Ledger is decentralized and permissionless. So nobody can prevent you from sending a transaction on the XRP Ledger. It always works. Uh, yeah, anybody can do transactions. Nobody prevents it. There's not a single authority in there. Uh, right. Anyone with the skills can create a token on the XRP Ledger themselves, not using my tool, not requiring KOC. Like I said, I can even maybe will one day make a video how you can how you can write your own code, piece of code to create a token. I will think about it. Um, right. 
there's nothing we can do about it. It's, they can still be a token created without KYC, and even with KYC, scams can happen. So do your own research and keep safe. So like I said, I think it's a good step by some community. It's like such as KYC, at least having somebody or some address and a name uh, where you can go to if somebody scams, and you can also, everything is documented. Every transaction on blockchain is documented. We know what everybody's doing, and yeah, at some, at some point it would be beneficial like that also being able to yeah know who somebody is more or less uh in case or uh, that the person is yeah scamming people so so um in regards to all the tokens on expo ledger currently so what i would highlight here is um so you should see most of the tokens as fun projects so most tokens i've seen so far are some are process tokens some are just fun tokens and so on and the only thing w what I would look out for if a token uh, tells you that they are a project, that they actually want to accomplish something, that the token gets utility. At that point, I would really look into the project and generally be very, very careful. You, have to, you need to see a white paper, you need to understand what the project does, you need to have a roadmap, you also need to know, uh, uh, know more information about the supplies, who has how much and so on. So I might even create a token uh, soon a, a website for analyzing some token metrics, like having knowing the holders, knowing the selling volume and so on. So I'm currently thinking about that. And for all the other tokens, for all the other fun tokens, I would be, like I said, wary or careful that you, like I said, don't put like your own XRP in or at least just a little, not too much, because it's it's a fun token, you know? It's, I guess many people want to trade it, which is also okay, also speculate, but yeah, there can be also price drops in it. And I'm, I'm just saying that you should be careful here and that it's cool that more people are using it. So I'm also highlighting, I think it's great that people are being educated on how to set a trust line. So if we have a quick look at the metrics here, I think it's very cool that we can see that more and more people are using the features of the trust lines. So we can see here the trust line uh, transactions. So whenever a trust line is set or removed or edited, it's a trust, set, uh, trust line set transaction. And you can see here that this has exploded in August. So you can see here it's been going on and on. And it's look at these metrics here. So you can see whatever, 90,000 a day. So even 116,000 trust lines in one day on the 4th of, on the 4th of October. So I like the trend. I like the more people are using the sum map and are learning more about the XRP and more about XRP, generally speaking. Like also, like I said, uh, about tokens. Uh, but like I said, you also have to know anybody can issue a token. It's the same uh, like on Ethereum. Anybody can also on Ethereum, anybody can issue. And here's a 20 token. I made plenty of videos showing you how easy it is. And it's the same on the extra Ledger. On the extra Ledger, those things are called, generally speaking, issued currencies um, slash a token. That's basically one and the same thing. And yeah, and all tokens which are on the extra Ledger are automatically integrated and can be traded on the DEX. It doesn't matter. So my dev token I just created, I can go to the XRP toolkit, to the testnet. So right now my balance will be adapted, I guess. Yeah. And I can go, just go to trade and I can do an, I can trade XRP to my dev token here. I can set a limit order. So limit buy order. Um, I want, for example, to buy one, 10 XRP and I'm willing to pay 1,000, uh, 1, uh, well, in total 10,000 um, dev tokens. So, oh, my bad, I don't have 10,000. So I'm gonna lower that. I'm, I'm willing to pay 100 per XRP. Um, in total, it's 10,000, and I can confirm that. And right now, I, I've set my own uh, buy limit order. So I'm right now buying XRP and paying with dev tokens. So that's how it more or less starts on the DEX. And I did a mistake, I think. Oh no, because I don't know my, ah, damn it. <laughs> Okay, now I have to log in with some, I guess, um, because I don't have the secret anymore, I think. So I'm going to try with that one here. Okay, that, ah, it's that account. That's good. Okay, cool. And yes, ah, uh, no, it's the other one. Yeah, never mind. But yeah, so here you can see that this account has created a transaction. So I'm just going to copy the uh, creator. So we can see here the account who created it. It's the creator account. I'm also going to add the buy address in this case, not but, so we can just look at it. We can see here that if we have a quick look at the DEX again and check out the trading for XRP DEF, uh, for XRP and DEF, yeah, we can see, okay, right, yeah, the trials are showing here. 
Uh, but generally speaking, it works now. So right now I created an offer and people can now buy this token from me in the, in the quantity of provided uh, for a price of 100 dev for one XRP. And yeah, that's how the DEX works. So like I said, any token is tradable. And I think it's 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 the right choice for some some community to protect the yeah the general public. So I know it's 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 also but yeah but it's only a protection for the token creators so people like i said people who actually know a little bit more about the extra pleasure when they have actual developers they will figure out how to issue tokens even without the token creator app all right so yeah that's everything so i hope i was able to explain that all of that so thanks for watching and see you in the next video